Hi, my name is Parker Walbeck. This is the True Millennial YouTube channel and Instagram page. And I just wanted to take a minute to introduce myself and why I'm doing this, why I created True Millennial, what it is, what I hope to create here on this channel. I had a couple of people asking on my Instagram page, why am I doing this? Why am I doing it right now? Just kind of what's the background behind this process of getting to this point. So I wanted to take you through my history, the past 15 years or so that have led me up to this point to creating this, why I'm choosing to do it right now, why I chose the name True Millennial. So hopefully just give you a little bit of insight as to what I hope to accomplish with this channel. So for those who don't know, I have a YouTube channel called Parker Walbeck, just by name, but it's full-time filmmaker, which is my business. We have almost 2 million subscribers on that channel. We teach video production and it's been very successful and very lucrative and I've enjoyed it. However, it's not my biggest passion. My biggest passion is the gospel of Jesus Christ, both living it and sharing it. And I felt kind of suppressed for the past decade or so, not being able to share it more openly because it's what I want to share. I've had some students of mine at Full Time Filmmaker asking me to create a podcast surrounding video production. And I didn't really want to because I'm not passionate enough about video to spend hours upon hours talking about it. Whereas the gospel of Jesus Christ, I could talk about that on end for hours and hours. And so, now that this is a podcast per se, but there will be podcast elements to it. And that's because I want to talk about it. I want to be more open about my faith and hopefully encourage others to find and discover faith as well. So just a quick background about why I'm doing this in the first place. Uh, 15 years ago or so, 2008, I served a mission in Montevideo, Uruguay. Absolutely loved my mission. It was the best two years for my life. I had a testimony of the gospel growing up. I grew up in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and always knew that it was good and, and to some degree that it was true, but I had never really been converted to the gospel. It never became a part of who I was. It was just kind of something cultural that you do because your parents tell you to and you go to church and you go through those motions and to some extent it becomes um, rude routine and, and there's elements of it that you latch onto and find valuable. But it wasn't until I served a mission, which I did voluntarily. No one forced me to do it. I feel like it was a good thing to do. I'd been blessed my whole life and felt like it was a good opportunity to go serve and help other people find similar happiness and joy in life. So I went to Uruguay and about six months in, I mean, it was a gradual process, but about six months in, I started feeling a change in my heart. I started feeling this desire to be a better version of myself. I started feeling myself truly connecting with my Savior, Jesus Christ, by utilizing His atonement, by repenting of some of my past sins, and just trying to purify myself and become a, a better version of myself. And not that I was a, a grave sinner or did anything horrendous before my mission, but you know, every, all of us have sins and, and weaknesses and things we battle with. And it wasn't until my mission that I really faced some of those and started discovering who I was, some of the issues I have, some of my propensities to be prideful and, and whatnot and, and impatient. I started discovering some of my weaknesses and had a strong desire to change and to improve and to become more like God, a better version of myself. And so my mission for me was an amazing time in my life where I got to have that conversion. I got to feel the gospel go through me instead of just going through the gospel, going through the motions. It became a part of who I was. It wasn't just something I did. It was, it was something that I was becoming, something that I was. It was a part of me. And so that was 2008 that I went out, 2009, uh, 2010, I was out there and the gospel just became a passion. It became a way of life, a lifestyle. I lived the gospel to exactness while I was out there, saw the blessings, saw the fruit, saw how much happier I was when I lived the gospel with exactness. And I wanted that feeling forever. I got to see a stark contrast of who I was and how I felt before my mission and who I was and how I felt on my mission and the light and the darkness contrast was just so stark, so night and day that I said, I will never go back. I will never live any other way. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the best way for every human being on the planet to live, to achieve 
optimal happiness and joy in this life and in the life to come. And I was convinced of that by personal experience. And I was convinced of that by watching and seeing other people, countless dozens of other people that I watched give up addiction and, and join the church and, and, you know, get married and have family units and seeing people change their lives like I did while I was on my mission. That I've just seen too many things to be able to live any other way and preach any other doctrine. The doctrine of Christ is perfect. We don't apply it perfectly, us as humans or as organizations, but I feel very strongly that anyone who will apply the gospel will find optimal happiness and joy in life. And so I wanted to dedicate the rest of my life to preaching that message, to sharing those gospel doctrines and principles. So when I got home in 2010, I always wanted to get into video production, but didn't really know where to get started. So when I got home, I started just tinkering around putting apostles' words in their general conference talks to uh, imagery and trying to make them more epic and cinematic and something more shareable. At this time, social media was just getting started and I saw an opportunity there to uh, make the gospel more shareable and more re relevant and exciting. But I didn't really have the skills yet to do that. And so I was tinkering and I tried with a few videos and didn't really know what I was doing and ultimately stopped. And then life got busy. I went to school, uh, started dating, went to UVU. And for a few years there, I kind of lost, not completely, but kind of lost that uh, passion that I'd gained on the mission and desire to share the gospel and just got busy with life you know, trying to make money, survive. And I think a lot of us are in that boat. Even today for me, I, I run a, a business full-time filmmaker and it's really hard to not focus on that and to take a step back and say, okay, like this is what's actually important is living the gospel and and preparing to to meet God someday and becoming more like him. And, and so there was probably a five-year gap from 2010 to 2015 where I was just focused on my vocational aspirations. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to be when I grow up, uh, was going to school full-time while starting a video production company uh, part-time. And so it was in that mix, 2012, 2013, that I, I picked up a camera and, and started shooting video and trying to do it professionally. Then I met Devin Supertramp in 2013. A lot of cool stories there with some divine intervention as well that I'd love to talk about later. But met up with Devin and started working for him and traveled the world with him for several years. And he was a huge mentor for me and helping me develop these skills that I'd, I'd wanted to utilize to share the gospel uh, more effectively. And and he took me under his wing and I, I learned a lot of great video and editing skills with him. And towards the end of my time with Devin in 2015, I did a trip to the Holy Land and got to see all the sites that Christ walked and got to document a lot of it. And Devin Supertramp's channel isn't anything related to the gospel per se. It's uh, adrenaline stuff, it's video game stuff. and but. I wanted to create something that I'd been wanting to create since I got home from my mission five years earlier in trying to incorporate the words of the apostles. And so I kind of took a stab at it just to see if Devin would go for it and be okay with me putting something like that on his YouTube channel. And so that's when I made the Holy Land in 4K video, which is basically just documenting the sites of the Holy Land put to music and to the words of apostles and prophets. It was finally, I finally felt like this is what I want to do. Like, this is exciting to me. This is my passion. I love video production. I love music. But ultimately, I love the gospel more than those things. And I just want to utilize these skill sets to share that gospel message. And so Devin, who's a member of the church, was on board for that project. We posted it. It did pretty well. It, it wasn't uh, a big hitter, obviously, and I didn't necessarily get huge negative feedback. It was pretty well accepted. But for me, it was such a huge passion booster. It was just like this, finally, I, I've created something that I really care about, that I'm really excited about. And there's been plenty of video projects in my life that have been fun and, and passionate. But this was the first one where I felt like this is what I've been called to earth to do is stuff more like this, figuring out how to combine my time, my talents, my abilities that God's given me 
to share goodness, share things that are actually impactful beyond this life that have eternal significance. And so that was my first big project, I'd say, in the format in which I hope to eventually do more of. But you can't really make a living off of that. Uh, it's hard to, especially with Devin's business, it wasn't the audience. And so it was just kind of a one-off thing we did. And then we just went back to the other styles of videos that we were making. And then the next year, 2016, I quit my job. I got married. And it was kind of a tough time where we, my wife and I, we had to figure out, okay, what are we going to do with our life? Like, am I just going to get a nine to five? Am I going to go back to school? I'd quit working for Devin and I could have gone a thousand directions. And and I asked my wife, I said, hey, I, I would like to be an entrepreneur. I would like to build my own business. I think I have what it takes to build something great, but I need your support. We got to do this together. It's going to take sacrifice for us. And she was on board. She said, I, I think that uh, you'll be happiest working for yourself and doing something on your own. So she supported me in that endeavor and has been a huge part of my success couldn't have done any of it without her. 2016, I started building my own production company and full-time filmmaker, started creating my course. And during that time, my wife and I basically made a promise with the Lord. We said, look, we both love the gospel. We would like to spend more of our time and effort sharing that gospel. But we also see this big thing in front of us called making money for the rest of our lives that kind of impedes us from being able to do that. Now, obviously, you can do those simultaneously, and there's even opportunities to have full-time occupations that allow you to share the gospel. But I kind of made up a game plan and said, look, Lord, I want to get this whole money thing out of the way. I'm not that passionate about money. I want to make money to the end of making enough so that I don't have to make any more money so that I can focus on doing what I truly want to do, which is share the gospel. Uh, in the capacity of doing it online with some of my talents and time, in the capacity of locally with my local church and callings or uh, someday going on missions with my wife because I loved my mission. She loved her mission. She ser served in uh, the Philippines. And we both want to eventually get out and serve missions uh, together as a couple someday. So those were our goals and aspirations as a couple, what we wanted to do with our, our time on this earth. But in front of us was, okay, well, we got to make money first or else we won't be able to sustain ourselves. Self-reliance, a gospel principle. We'll have a whole video talking about that. A lot of topics that I want to talk about that I, I'm very passionate about. So we basically made a promise with the Lord and said, look, if you can help us be successful financially, get this temporal thing out of the way, we'll devote the rest of our lives to building up your kingdom, to sharing the gospel message, to you know, consecrating our lives more fully, our time, our talents, everything with which you blessed us to building up your kingdom and, and serving uh, our fellow human beings, because that's ultimately what makes us happiest in life. Making video production tutorials, teaching people online, helping them make a living with the education that I give them, that's also fulfilling. And I love that. And that's also a part of how I can serve people on this earth and uh, feel like I'm, I'm uh, bringing about God's purposes. But on top of that, I would also like to do something more direct with the gospel message. And so, again, not that you can't share the gospel and be consecrated and build up God's kingdom while having a full-time occupation. I just wanted to be able to, I'm just kind of a 100% all in one thing at a time. It's really hard for me to divide my time. So even now uh, where I'm trying to transition into creating more gospel content, I almost have to just split it up into days. Like, all right, Monday through Wednesday is focused on working my business. And then Friday through Saturday will be focused on this true millennial stuff uh, because it's really hard for me to do both at the same time. That's just my brain. And so anyway, we asked God and said, hey, look, we, we really want to do this. We want to you know, do more of this stuff full time, but we need help with the financial part first. So we're willing to work really hard, try and build this business. And uh, if you can help us do that, then we will devote more of our time to all of your purposes. And he has come through. We have been very successful with our full-time filmmaker business, and it's been way more successful than I ever imagined and grown so much quicker than I ever imagined. And 
it's all happened a lot quicker than we thought. I was thinking when, oh, we're in our 40s or 50s or whatever. I'm 33 now, and we're already at a point where it's like, all right, we got to start making good on our side of the deal here. Like he's blessed us immensely. Time to start devoting more of our time and talents towards uh, his purposes. So coming back to my timeline here, 2018, about two years after I launched Full-Time Filmmaker, things are picking up speed. It's doing really well. And I'm starting to build my own channel up to probably half a million subscribers at this point. And I wanted to attempt another Holy Land style video. And so we went to Thailand on a trip, got a bunch of awesome footage, and I threw it together in a timeline when I got home and thought, hey, this is an opportunity for me to do something similar with that Holy Land video. And so I had my wife write up a script uh, of how we can become like God and how we as human beings have a lot in common. And our ultimate purpose, all of ours, is to become more like our, our creator. So she put together a script and we put it into this edit and it was another Holy Holy Land style video of, of incorporating a gospel message into the visuals that I had created. And again, it did decently well. It wasn't necessarily geared towards my specific audience, but it, it did decently well. But it was another, another point where I realized this is what I want to do. And I keep having these lulls in my life where I'm doing other things that are also good, but there's good, better, best, right? And to me, this is the best thing I can be doing. I can do some of that better stuff, but I want to do more of this best stuff. And then in 2019, we went to a conference called Unify. We got invited to this where uh, there was just Latter-day Saints, influential people who had followings online. And it was just a conference to get together and talk about what are some things we can do as Latter-day Saints who are public online to better share the gospel message, to be voices for good. We are getting slaughtered online from anti-Mormons, anti-religious people, just desecrating the name of God online. And where's all the saints? Where's all the valiant people who actually believe in this stuff? Where are their voices? Why aren't they speaking out? And it was kind of an eye-opening conference for us to realize that that is our duty on this earth as covenant children of God, as people who've been blessed with the gospel, specifically the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not enough for us just to live it and enjoy the blessings. We need to actually take the time now to go and once we've partaken of that fruit, to go and then share it with the rest of the world. And the tools of social media were given to us in these latter days specifically for us to share the gospel message. And yet, what are we using it for? To browse and watch funny videos and we'll spend hours on there, yet we won't spend 10 minutes to share a testimony or to reshare some words of the prophet. Or I mean, it just seems so simple. Like, man, we, we, we need to do better. We need to share the gospel more. That's why we are here. And so that was 2019, about four years ago. And we both just felt that like, mm, yeah. And we weren't yet at the point with our business where it's like, well, we can just leave this aside. We still needed to kind of be in the grind. But that's where I kind of pivoted my business and said, you know what, it's time to try and figure out how to make this a business that's less reliant on me. So that's when I started hiring guys like Jake and Landon and some of the guys who've worked in my business to try and create a team that could uh, run the business without so much of my time so that I could spend more time doing the things that I felt more called to do in life. And we did that for two or three years. They were awesome. They helped build it and grow it. But ultimately, they were ambitious and wanted to go do their own things. They didn't want to become the new face of full-time filmmaker. They wanted to uh, go build their own businesses. And so that didn't work out long term, but it did allow us to continue to grow the business. But then in 2021, uh, two years ago, I got called as a gospel doctrine teacher in my local ward. And it just re-sparked some of those passions for the gospel. I had kind of gone a few years there where I just wasn't as engaged in my studies. And I really haven't been as engaged in my gospel studies very well since my mission. And these past couple of years, past year and a half or so, has just been this re-spark again of, oh my gosh, like this this is it. This is why we're here. And there's just, my life's kind of been this roller coaster of feeling that fire and that desire to share the gospel. And then kind of getting busy with work and other things and life hits you and get into golf and really into golf. And, and again, good, better, best. I don't think golf isn't bad, but are there more important things in life? Yeah, there are. Uh, so I would go through these roller coaster phases in my life where I would 
have priorities a little bit out of balance. And, and so getting that calling and kind of forcing me to really dig into the scriptures and, and have better study habits the past year and a half has again, re-sparked that desire to share the gospel. And I'm, I'm no, I'm no gospel scholar. I didn't go for, to school for it. I, I, I'm not uh, an institute teacher or a seminary teacher, so I don't have any profound insights to share. What I do have though, is a very strong testimony, very strong faith, and a good amount of knowledge of the doctrines of Jesus Christ and how they can bless your life if you live them and apply them. And so, you know, anybody can do that. No, you don't have to have a large following. You don't have to, uh, have a degree in religious studies to be able to share what makes you happy in life, to be able to share the gospel, to be able to share the hope that is within you, as Peter says. And so, um, you know, that's what I've always felt. And I have always felt that that's something that the Lord has wanted me to do. And I'm introverted. I don't like doing it. It's not comfortable for me being in front of a camera and putting my face out online. I would like to go buy some farmland in Missouri or, you know, somewhere in the prairies and be a recluse with my family and have nobody within a mile of us and just live on the farm. And that's more of my style, but that's not what the Lord wants me to do. And so every time I try and ask him what he wants, he's not telling me to do that. He's telling me to put my face online. And I'm just like, oh, but I don't want to. Like, I don't want to be ridiculed. I don't want all the negative comments that I get. I don't want any of that. But I know that that's what God wants me to do. And so despite my personality being introverted, introverted and despite me wanting to be more recluse, I feel this duty and this the spirit prompting me saying, hey, sorry, you're not going to, you know, you're not living, you're, you're living beneath your privileges if you're not putting yourself out there and, and sharing the gospel message. And so, yeah, so it's not, it's not even something that I want to do um, necessarily, but I want to do God's will. And this is what he wants me to do. So it is what I want to do ultimately. So fast forward to 2022, in March, we had our baby Lila. She was our third child. And each of our children have been a transition, trying to uh, keep up with them. And, and I have less and less of my own personal time with the more kids we get. But that third kid really hit hard. We're outnumbered now. We have to go to a zone defense. We can't man to man anymore. And so Lila really shook up our family dynamic. And at this time, I had 12 employees with my business. And I was managing these, these teams and these businesses. And I just was needed more at home. And I didn't have enough physical time to do it all. I was just drained. And so I had to decide, I got to let something go in my life here. And I'm not going to let my family go. And so that was the time where I set my employees free and said, all right, we've grown to a point. You guys have grown to a point where I feel like you can spread your wings and fly and go start your own businesses. It's been a great run, but I am no longer looking to scale my business. I am looking to just maintain it and slowly allow it to come down a little bit over time. But I've reached my peak with business. I need to reprioritize my life. My family comes first. I can no longer do everything. Had too many plates spinning, and so I had to get rid of one. And what I got rid of was my team. I said, hey, spread your wings. And it was, it was pretty mutual. They, they were um, in a position where they were excited to go out and, and start their own ventures. And so we're now down to three people in my business. We've, we've slimmed way down and just simplified the business model. And, you know, it's still running and I'll continue to run it for years to come. But like I said, it's, it's no longer full time for me. It's more part time so that I can do other things like this uh, part time as well. And so that was kind of the catalyst was our child, Lila. She was sent by God to um, reprioritize my life and help me recognize where I need to um, free up my time for things that are more important. And, you know, the past, I'd say three or four years, um, I mean, since 15 years ago when I was on my mission, but especially the past three or four years, I've just been feeling these promptings like God saying, hey, your business is great and I love how passionate you are about it. 
and you're helping a lot of people in certain areas. But remember that initial promise you made to me that the whole point of this business was so that you could rededicate more of your time and talents to some of the things that I want you to do. Well, now's the time. I want you to start doing that. And for the past two or three years, I've been gradually getting up to that point and trying to make that transition and trying to set up my business in, a, in an area, in a place where it could be more self-sustainable. So I've kind of had this back and forth battle for the past couple of years, trying to figure out what's the balance of continuing to run that business, but also uh, making more time for some of these things that God's uh, want me to take, take time to do. And so that was in the spring of last year. It's almost been a year. And since then, I've been conjuring up some kind of a plan to start this channel. And it was in August, so five or six months after Lila was born, that I started posting regularly on my Instagram account. I've been brainstorming all summer trying to figure out, okay, what does it look like? Is it a podcast? Is it an Instagram page? What's the format of the content? And I still don't know. And I finally just said in August, you know what, I'm just going to start posting. And we'll just see how it goes, see where it goes, and I'll just learn as I go. So I just started posting. I, I just dedicated and said, I'm going to share at least one message a week on my Instagram, uh, some spiritual message, something from what I'm studying. Just going to share it out there. Just see what the reaction is, see what people uh, are engaged with. And, and so that was August. So it's been about six months since that first post that I've been posting every week and trying to be consistent and it, with the... Uh, sharing the gospel message. And, and all the while, I've been thinking, okay, what should I just do this under my own account? Should I create a name for it? And so I've been brainstorming and I had a list of probably 60 or 70 names of what can I call it? And we'll talk about the name here in just a second. But uh, ultimately, we came up with the name True Millennial and launched this new YouTube channel and, and Instagram page, True Millennials. Ultimately, I don't know yet what this is going to be. Again, the way I operate is I just start acting and I feel like the Lord starts to guide me as I begin acting. As I sit there and pray and ask, hey, what should I do next? I don't get a lot of inspiration, but once I just start acting, the Lord starts guiding me and helping me know where to go. So that's what this is. It's, all right, let's just start. Uh, the name True Millennial might change. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. The name isn't that important. It's just something somewhere to start putting out content. All I know is I love the gospel. I love sharing it. By sharing it, it also enhances my studies. So that's one of the main reasons I'm doing this is for my own personal testimony and conversion to grow is I find that when I share the gospel, it forces me to study the gospel better because then I get people asking questions and then I have to study those questions. And, and so I'm just learning a lot more. I'm just a lot more uh, focused on my, my conversion process and, and becoming more like Christ when I force myself to share. Anyone who teaches knows that when you teach something, you learn it a lot better than if you just read through a book and didn't have to turn around and then explain it to somebody else. And so to me, that's one of the biggest reasons. If for nothing else, if nobody watches these videos, if nobody gets anything out of them, it will have been worth it for me because personally, I will have grown and been more converted and increased my personal studies. And lastly, why I'm doing this is because the past decade of my life has been God allowing me to develop certain skills and marketing and video and editing that ultimately I feel aren't to be used solely for me making money, but for me to bless the lives of other people. And so uh, now I feel like is the time that God is telling me to, hey, it's, it's time to start putting more of an emphasis and focus on helping other people and not just filling your pockets with cash. My wife and I both take very seriously the covenants we make in the temple, one of which is the law of consecration. We covenant to consecrate our lives to the building up of God's kingdom and devoting all of our time, talents, and everything with which he's blessed us to building up his kingdom on earth. And there's obviously various ways to do that. That's not going to look the same for everybody. But as we've been prayerful in trying to figure out what that looks like for us, uh, this is one of the directions we've we've felt is is how we can more fully consecrate our time and talents is by being more vocal online 
uh, about our testimonies and about our faith. And I say we because, again, this is a joint effort. My wife and I are doing this together. She's posting stuff on her own social media as well, but she will be a part of the content within True Millennial. And she is a huge part of it on the front end because her and I are having these conversations every night about gospel principles and about our kids. And and so, you know, a lot of it starts there. And then as we're having these discussions, they blossom into content that we share online. And so... Um, just know that it's it's a joint effort. It's my wife and I. Uh, she's a little bit more camera shy, and so I I'm also, but I'm a little bit more versed because I do this for my occupation, and so uh, I'm a little bit more willing to get in front of the camera. But we'll we'll get her in front of the camera as well and get her more used to it. I'd, I'd like her to be more involved in the future. So, why the name True Millennial? Uh, really, the name has very little significance. It's just not that important. The important part is there's a, just a place to put the content. But a few thoughts and a few reasons why I ended up choosing it, things I like about it. I think it encapsulates really well the identity that our prophet, President Nelson, has told us is our true identity as first and foremost, children of God, second, children of the covenant or members of his church, people who've covenanted to live his gospel, and third, disciples of Christ. And he did that talk uh, that I posted last week, how to become a true millennial was his talk. And he basically redefines the word millennial and says, you know, experts say it's this, but I say God is telling me that a true millennial is a disciple of Christ who prepares themselves and the world for the second coming and millennial reign of Jesus Christ. And so to me, it was a fitting name for uh, encapsulating what our identity is here is we are disciples of Christ and we are preparing ourselves to be uh, see him again and to be with our heavenly father again. You know, I, I'm a millennial, so that's one of the reasons. Um, and I'm speaking to millennials. I'm speaking to everyone, but I can relate really well to millennials because I am one. And so that was another reason why I chose the name is it was relevant to my age and people of my age that I'm speaking to um, who are generally my audience. And I love the topic of the second coming that's a passion of mine. I love talking about it. I think it's really exciting preparing for uh, the second coming of Jesus Christ and learning about it. And a uh, true millennial is someone who is preparing for his second coming. So it's a passion point for me. So that's another reason why I chose the name. I also think there's a community element there. Uh, all of us together coming together as true millennials, those who are preparing for Jesus Christ. That's one of the reasons why I'm starting this is I want to create a community aspect. I feel like out in the world, out in social media, we have a lot of lone and dreary elements of wandering on online where there's just a lot of anti, a lot of anti-religious, a lot of anti-Mormon, a lot of faithless, a lot of just straight up filth and garbage. And I wanted to be a part of combating that. I wanted to be a part of being a voice for good and being a voice for uh, God's message in a world where this tool that he's given us in these last days is being utilized in full force by the army of the devil. And where's the army of God? Where are we? Are we asleep? Are we sleeping through the restoration? Or are we awake and are we alive? And are we doing our part to share messages of truth and light? with all the world. And so that's uh, another thing I wanted to do is just create a space, a community, a, a channel on YouTube, on Instagram, where people can go to get a break from the world, where people can go to feel the spirit, where people can go to, that they can follow. And I've been following, I've been inspired by other channels that, that uh, I've been following on YouTube and Instagram. And thanks to them for inspiring me, I've felt like I wanna join the ranks. I wanna join these people who are being bold enough and brave enough to share their testimony online and are willing to take some ridicule in the name of Christ. And it's not easy and you don't, ha I'm not saying that any, every one of you have to, has to do it to be a valiant uh, member of, of a disciple of Christ, but I've felt like that's something God wants me to do and um, I'm willing to do it. And so here I am doing it. But yeah, so there's a, there's a community aspect that I hope that, you know, us who are here on this page, on this YouTube channel, on Instagram, there's just a, a general feeling of, of faith and family values and where you can be around like-minded people who help build you up. Uh, I believe strongly that you are the average of the five people you hang around most. If you hang around five alcoholics, 
you'll become the sixth. If you hang around five millionaires, you'll become the sixth. If you hang around five people who are faithful and living their covenants and, and growing their faith in Jesus Christ, you'll probably become the sixth as well. And so I'm hoping to create that community, one of the many communities, but a community where you can go to find like-minded people who are trying to build faith in Christ. So that is why True Millennial, that is why the name. What do I hope to create on this channel? Again, I don't ultimately know yet. We're just going and we will learn as we go and and I will learn as I go. Like, I'm not going to do this perfectly. I'm going to say things that might offend people and I... I will share his gospel message imperfectly. I might say scriptures or phrases imperfectly. Uh, so have a little bit of mercy with me as, as I navigate and, and do this very imperfectly, but I hope to continue to improve in my ability to share his, his message with clarity. But some of the things that I want to do is I wanna do gospel principle breakdowns. Uh, I love the doctrine. I love the principles. And so I love to discuss further in depth, uh, breaking down some of those gospel principles, how they apply to me. I want to have other people on here. I want to interview other people, how they apply the gospel principles in their lives. I want to try and make the gospel more relevant. And so by sharing how it's applicable to me in my life and then interviewing other people in more podcast form of how it's applicable in their lives. I also want to do LDS book um, summaries, not just LDS books, but any good books that I feel are, are promoting of gospel principles. I want to do basically, if I read a good book, I want to do a breakdown, a 10, 20 minute video sharing my favorite parts and the main principles and points. Um, I know that not everybody has time to read all these books. And so I want to create, you know, a, a series where I am sharing what I learned from that book so that you can get a Reader's Digest version of it and then choose if you want to go and read it as well. I also want to do general conference talk summaries. That's kind of what I've been doing right now on Instagram. Um, it's just taking a talk, breaking it down into two or three minutes and putting some images and music to it and just making it relevant and fun and and getting the message because I feel like these general conference talks we hear every six months are packed with so much great stuff. But how often do we go back and actually listen to these whole talks? And so I want to kind of create that reminder that, hey, there's been a lot of gold that's been delivered in the past six months at general conference. Here's a little nugget. Here's a little nugget. Here's a little nugget. Just to kind of keep you reminded, keep all of us reminded of those gospel truths and what our modern day prophets and apostles are teaching us. So yeah, those are some of the ideas I have of content I want to create. And again, it'll just kind of shape itself. We'll just, I'll start creating what you guys uh, like and enjoy. We'll create more of what you don't like as much. We'll do less of. And last question I'll answer is who's my audience? Who am I speaking to? I got asked this question after my first post. Someone asked me, who, who exactly are these messages for? And at the time I said, I don't, I don't really know. I'm just putting out messages and we'll see as we go. But I've pondered and prayed about that and asked my heavenly father, who is my audience? Who do you want me to speak to? The phrase that hit me really hard was from President Nelson when he says, let God prevail in your life. And that is who I'm speaking to in these messages is anyone and everyone who is willing to let God prevail in their lives. Anybody who is willing to let God prevail, to take the steering wheel and to do his will over your own will, my messages I hope will resonate with you as I am teaching and talking about and discussing some of these principles that God wants us to live and wants us to do and wants us to share. And so whether you're a member of my faith or not, I feel like that encapsulates anyone and everyone. If you've left the church, if you're in the church, if you're wavering, if you're of other faiths, other religions entirely, not of any religion at all, anybody at any point can choose to let God prevail in your life, to humble yourself, to submit yourself to his will. And anyone who does, I think, will feel the spirit in the messages that I will be sharing. So I personally am striving to let God prevail in my life. I am striving to become a true millennial, one who is a disciple of Christ, preparing myself and others for his second coming and millennial reign. And I invite anyone and everyone to join me in that journey. That's all I got. Excited to have you here, excited to be here, and we'll see where it goes. Thanks for watching.